Next, we will talk about graphing points and lines in two dimensions. Now think first, think back to one dimension, or dealing with one variable. A simple equation like this, an x plus 7 equals 10, that's easy to solve. In fact, you can just solve it in your head. x has to be 3 in order for that equation to be true. And we can graph that solution. We can take that number, and we can plot it on a number line. And that's just a matter of taking that point, x equals 3, and just drawing a little dot on the number line at that point. And what that does is just give you, gives you a visual picture of where that answer sits in relation to all the other numbers. And that's sometimes useful. And that's especially useful when we get to two variables, which is what we do now. When we're dealing with equations with two variables, a single number line isn't enough. We need two number lines. And we arrange these two number lines at right angles. And we, we take our our number line which we call an x-axis and we put one at right angles to that and we call that y. So there's the two variables x and y and each line there is called an axis. And on the x-axis we typically have positive numbers to the right and negative numbers to the left just like we have on an ordinary number line. And on the y-axis we typically have positive numbers up and negative numbers down. And the zero point on each, each axis, just like we have a zero point on the number line, we could mark off numbers on each of these axes. And the zero point right there, horizontally and vertically, is called the origin. That's the point where x is 0 and y is 0. So in other words, we might number these x values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and same with the y values. Number those going up 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And this point right in the middle would be the 0 point, the origin, 0 on both axes. These two axes divide the plane into four separate regions called quadrants, and we typically number them like this. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. And we always start here, where x and y are both positive, and go around in that direction. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And every math book I've ever looked at uh, numbers these with Roman numerals. And um, I'm pretty sure the reason there is just so that if you refer to those quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4, those numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 don't get confused with these other numbers that you're using to indicate the positions on the number line or, or on the axis as we call it. So those are just typically labeled with Roman numerals and each of those four regions is called a quadrant. So four quadrants. And these two axes arranged in this way are called a Cartesian coordinate system. A Cartesian coordinate system. And that word Cartesian comes from the name Descartes. This was a thinker named Rene Descartes, R-E-N-E -E with an accent, and D-E-S-C-A-R-T-E-S, -E -E but silent S, Rene Descartes. He was a French thinker, did a lot of significant work in philosophy, uh, did some work in physics, but his, his most in, enduring work was in mathematics, and in particular this right here. He was um, he developed this concept of the xy plane in this way and used it to study functions, which we we will be studying uh, later on in this chapter. And um, the study of functions is a tremendously important topic. Descartes did a lot of other things. If you study philosophy at the college level, you will no doubt run across his ideas. He was very influential. Um, he also did uh, a good bit of work in physics, but didn't get it right. And um, Newton came along and corrected corrected his errors in physics. But Descartes was a capable mathematician, and um, and this is one of the one of his ideas that we still use routinely. And Descartes, René Descartes, he was a man. René was not a girl's name at that time and place. If you know someone named René in 21st century America, it's most likely a girl, and it's probably spelled R-E-N-E-E, -E, but this name spelled this way in, uh, in France in the 1600s was commonly a male name. 